Getting this monster off the drawing board required new, super lightweight materials, four powerful new mega-sized engines, massive new factories across Europe, and a computerized flight control system more sophisticated than any other in commercial aviation. This moment is the biggest gamble that the company has ever taken. A $12 billion investment, the company's entire future, and the lives of future passengers all ride on the success of this historic test flight. Alongside the runway, a hush settles over the crowd as the mega plane comes into view. Gradually, it gathers speed accelerating to reach its takeoff velocity of 269 kilometers per hour. Then, as it nears the end of the runway, the moment of truth. The massive nose tilts skyward. A sliver of daylight appears beneath the rear wheels. And the Airbus A380 takes to the sky for the very first time. The engineers and technicians in the crowd breathe a collective sigh of relief. Their baby is flying. The question now is, does anyone want a plane this big? Will the unprecedented size prove a boon or a boon doggle? Is this super jumbo the future of commercial aviation? Or the biggest white elephant since Howard Hughes built the Spruce Goose? It all depends on whether Airbus can convince airlines that travelers will want to trust their fates to this flying cruise ship. No one yet knows the end of this story. But one thing is sure, any failure on this day, even a minor setback at this critical moment, would be a crushing and very public disaster for Airbus, with consequences that would reverberate around the world. The plane disappears from view. For the next four hours, while the flight crew puts this massive cruiser through its paces, the gathered crowd has little to do but wait, and perhaps reflect on the journey that brought them to this moment. The historic journey that began almost 40 years ago. 1969 was a year of technology firsts, that year saw the arrival of two exotic new airliners. Boeing rolled out the 747, the first double-decker passenger plane, larger and heavier than any other. Powered by four Pratt & Whitney JT9D engines, providing a total of 186,000 pounds of thrust, the plane had enough oomph to carry more than 400 passengers and their baggage more than double the capacity of the 707. The plane wasn't an immediate hit, but eventually it took off. The Concorde is here. That same year, Aerospatiale and British Aircraft Corporation, the precursor to Airbus, introduced the Concorde. While Boeing was bulking up, Europeans were getting small, but very fast. The Concorde traded capacity for speed, the plane carried only 128 passengers, but it could cruise at twice the speed of sound, cutting the trip from New York to London from almost eight hours to just under three and a half. Both the 747 and the Concorde came to be the epitome of luxury in air travel. These two differing visions came to symbolize a fierce rivalry between American and European aerospace giants. A rivalry that's only intensified with time, even as the business of air travel has changed dramatically. The Concorde, after years of financial difficulties and a devastating crash in Paris, has been grounded. And the 747 is now an aging workhorse, noted less for style and more for the sheer number of passengers it can pack between its wings. What changed to turn air travel from a luxury to the airborne bus ride that it is today? Simple economics. In just a few short decades, the number of people traveling by air has tripled. 
Now, every day, hundreds of thousands of people pack into 70,000 flights, taking off and landing at more than 4,000 airports around the world. And those numbers are only going to get bigger, much bigger. Industry analysts predict that the number of air travelers could double again by the year 2020. That is, if anyone can figure out how to squeeze them into an already overcrowded system. Both Boeing and Airbus saw the writing on the wall in the 1990s. But the companies each took a very different bead on the problem. Boeing believed that one of the biggest increases in air travel would be point-to-point -point flights. Get on near your home, get off near your destination. Boeing put its muscle behind the 787 Dreamliner, a highly efficient plane designed to carry an average of only 250 people. The A380, though, is an altogether different order of beast. It's designed for hub-to-hub -hub travel. Passengers will board a small plane near their home, then connect in a major airport to a larger plane, travel halfway around the world, and get off at their final destination. It's a strategy specifically designed to serve the most rapidly expanding long-haul routes in and out of Asia, and to cater to customers who appreciate a bit of pampering. The plane's sheer size, with two passenger decks, is large enough for both standard seating as well as more luxurious features, like a lounge, a high-end shop, two staircases, even a waterfall. It's a breathtaking dream. But no one knew if such a plane could be built. Some argued that such a craft would be far too heavy and expensive to be practical. But a tenacious and aptly named Airbus executive, Charles Champion, wouldn't take no for an answer. He encouraged his design team to think outside the box. Yeah, well, there were lots of uh, weird designs. Some looked at the double bubble. One of their first ideas, the double bubble, a double wide fuselage, it looked promising, but computer analysis showed that it would be far too heavy and not sufficiently aerodynamic. So Champion sent his team back to the drawing board, and eventually they came up with this history-making concept. A full-length, double-decker passenger cabin, with a third deck below for cargo. Space-wise, it's the equivalent of two complete wide-body cabins, one on top of the other. The new plan called for an aircraft only 2.5 metres longer than Boeing 747. It was 15 metres wider and 5 metres taller. But when they ran the design figures through the computer, they had a shock. The plane was far too heavy. And we came up with horrid figures saying, my God, this is the weight of the aircraft, doesn't work. So what we did immediately at the launch of the program, or two, three months afterwards, we, we launched a very strong challenge on the weight. The team set out to bring the base weight of the aircraft below 277 tons. That's only about 50% heavier than the 747. An ambitious goal for a plane designed to carry over 100 more passengers and their luggage halfway around the world. Unless Champion and his engineers could find the means to beat that target, the dream would die.